The question is simple. Are you too dumb for data science? There's a lot to learn in data science. Integration, differentiation, descent with crazy graphs like this. And that's before even thinking about programming. SQL. Wait, regular SQL or Postgres SQL? Python or R? Graph databases? Oh, wait, I need to visualize it too, so Tableau or Power BI. And that's before having people tell you that you can go from zero to data scientist in 30 days, making you feel even dumber. Here's the good thing though. I can almost guarantee you that you are smart enough to be a data scientist. I'll be telling you exactly why that is and also some strategies that you could put in place from today to learn it in the least painful way possible. You can be a data scientist because skill acquisition is universal. Whether it's improving your typing speed or mastering Photoshop, with time you can learn it. I mean if I locked you in a cell and for 6 months the only thing you were allowed to do was Photoshop for 4 hours a day, my guess is by the end you'd be pretty good. So why put data science on a pedestal, like you have to be anointed by the data science gods in order to learn it? But with any skill there is one big caveat. And Faraz Zahabi, who is an MMA coach, has eloquently summed it up. The majority of you will land here. Some of you will land here and some of you will land here. Here you're extremely gifted. Here you've been cursed. And here you're pretty much plain Jane average. Okay. If you were born here, I can get you to UFC. Now, if you were born here, I'll make you world champion. If you were born here, I can't get you to UFC. I can get you to like a good professional career. If you were born here, I can get you to UFC. Why? You're competing with other guys. If you put the time and energy and you have the more skills and you have the proper teaching from a long period of time, you're going to get here. You're going to get here. But you won't beat those guys who were born with it. Let's translate this to data science. Essentially, you are smart enough to become a data scientist, but intelligence does have a role to play in how high of a ceiling you have in the field. For example, if you are just average to decent intelligence, maybe your ceiling would be a fan company if you put in a lot of work. If you're pretty smart already, you might be a higher up in the data science department of a big AI or data company like OpenAI. And if your intelligence isn't the highest, you can still be a data scientist, but maybe in a more slow moving company that's not right on the cutting edge of the field. And unlike sports like the UFC where your talent is all that's measured, in a career there are other levers to be pulled like knowing the right people and having a better portfolio etc. But I digress. Unlike a sport though where age is a limiting factor, being in this career trajectory affords us the luxury of time. We do not have to be good by a specific age. And this means we can learn at our own pace to a greater extent and utilize long-term thinking. My own journey is the perfect reflection of long-term thinking. So I always knew that I would be beginning my masters in data science in September 2021. So from January 2021, I was on data camp every day. But because everything I was learning was theoretical, I wasn't actually grasping the concepts. So when I got to my masters, I had to effectively force myself to begin from scratch. And then guess what? During my masters, two months into the Python module, I realized that even after restarting the learning process, I still was not grasping the concepts. I was trying to keep up with everybody else in the class. So I kept stacking up new concepts on top of each other without ever truly grasping any of them, giving me a really shaky foundation. So guess what? One day because I was thinking through a longer frame lens, I just stopped and committed the next few days to restarting the course material to strengthen my foundation before moving on. So effectively do not be afraid to slow things down and make sure that you have grasped each concept. In addition to the prospect of using time to your advantage, another important thing to realize is that learning data science is often the roughest part. It's like being back in high school where you have to know a little bit of everything. You'll need to know a little bit of NLP, some predictive modeling, some maths, clustering algorithms, machine learning and what have you. However, once you are in your first job, your focus begins to narrow into the few key areas that will provide value to your company. So now you can channel all of your intellect into that narrow area and begin to have a deep understanding of it and slowly become an expert in that domain. So that's the why, but what are some strategies that we can implement to make our learning more effective? The first point is to limit how much information you consume. This goes for content creators and courses. With courses, it is tempted to start a course and then halfway through you hear that, oh no, actually this one is better. And you just keep switching and switching and switching. The truth is most of these courses will teach you similar concepts. So it's best to take some time, do some research 
and find a course that suits your learning style and finish that course. Otherwise, you'll end up with a Frankenstein of a knowledge base with elements from all the different courses, but some gaping holes in your armory as well. The same goes with creators. There are thousands of data science people across the different platforms, and we all have different expertise and biases. So what happens is, if you follow 300 data science influencers, you will have information overload, and at times conflicting information, filling your head whilst you're trying to learn this, which is not ideal. So as with the course, look around, find a few people that you relate to and that you like, and learn as much as you can from them. And when you're learning, take what's meaningful from them, and if you have something you don't agree with, just leave that to the side. And when you've learned as much as you can from that particular person, then you can start adding in new people to have a different perspective and broaden your knowledge in the subject as a whole. And then you want to simplify the process as much as possible. Learn one programming language at a time, I'd say Python, and get proficient at that before adding others like SQL into the mix. The key word is proficient. I'm not expecting you to become an expert as it takes so much time to fully learn a programming language, if that's even possible. In fact, pare it down not even to just learning one language, but learn the few crucial elements of that language. So learn the most important bits of Python. So start with your NumPy and your pandas, and then build a little project doing that. Just slowly, slowly, brick by brick, build your knowledge base. And the last thing is simple goals and application. Firstly, don't have big amorphous goals like learn data science. Set micro goals like by the end of this week, I want to be able to understand linear regression in theory and to be able to implement it in Python. And here's the crucial part. The next week, take that knowledge of linear regression and try to build something with this new concept. Understand when would I use linear regression? Okay, in the real world, it's for prediction. So I'll write a little project that forecasts staff demand for specific days and that sort of thing. Now, all of a sudden, you're learning a skill, learning to apply it, and adding it to your portfolio. There is so much more to go into, but I don't want to be the reason for your information overload. So if you want a complete roadmap to learn data science, so you know what are the most important elements of Python, for example, sign up for my newsletter down below and the roadmap will be emailed straight to you. Other than that, you can also watch this video where I go in depth in how I would relearn data science if I had to.